Hi, my name is Esther Thompson from Utah State University. I'll be demonstrating some easy do-it-yourself tests for measuring soil quality, which will include aggregate slate tests and the Solvita test. Testing for soil quality is a great way to compare between management practices on the same soil type. These tests can also keep track of the soil quality in one location over a given period of time. However, it's slightly more difficult due to variables apart from management that affect soil quality from year to year. There are a number of do-it-yourself chemical tests available online and in hardware stores. However, results when compared to lab tests were less promising, so the best recommendation is to take your soils to a lab for a chemical test. The first test I will show will be the sieve and bucket slate test. So I'll be going over two physical tests in this video that can be done with regular household equipment. You'll need a fine mesh sieve. This can be bought at any store, really. <laughs> You'll need also soil from wherever you want to test your management practices. You'll need a bucket of water filled to the top. This is, I think, a uh, 2.5 gallon, no, 8 quart. And then we have just another little bit of water in case the other, if this spills over the side. And then you'll also want access to a hose. So when you're filling, you want to fill your sieve with the soil. And basically you just want to cover, make sure that it's up to the rim. Once that's done, you'll really want to take a picture of your soil just so you know what it looks like before you start dunking it and doing all the funny things you do to it. Next, you'll want to just dunk this entire thing into the water. And you'll want to make sure that it's completely covered. If it's not quite completely covered, you can make sure to dunk it and then start timing it. So now it's been five minutes. So this is ready to come out. This is how we do this. So basically, just take it out. That counts for one, two, three, four, five. So on the surface of this soil, you can see that there's kind of a variety of aggregate shapes and sizes. You have big clumps, you have some small ones. This soil is from the organic orchard which has a straw mulch in the alley in the tree row and then it has legumes in the alleyway so you can see that there's some soil structure some of it has kind of um, blended together a little bit more this is a relatively good soil structure so when you're looking at this surface structure test this physical test, basically you're looking at the difference in the soil structure from when you, from before you started dunking the soil and then after. So it's good to take pictures before and after to see the difference and to record the difference. And if you do that on a yearly basis, you'll get a good sense as to whether over time you're seeing more aggregates forming in your soil or if maybe they're being depleted and something needs to be done about that. In these before and after images, you can see that the structure of the soil was largely lost after dunking. The soil has a glossy look and much of the surface is looking smoothed over. Some of the larger pieces of soil didn't completely break down, so the rating wouldn't be at 0% aggregates remaining after dunking, but looks to be closer to about 20%. In this photo, you can see much of the aggregates remained, both large and small aggregates. The soil surface structure has largely remained. There is some smoothing over on the surface that is happening, but overall it's minimal. This could easily be rated in the 80% and above range.
In this photo, you can see after it was dunked, the structure broke down a little more than the previous example shown, but not as much as what was shown in the very first example. The soil shown here has retained an adequate amount of large and small aggregates. However, the glossiness is apparent and there has been some obvious smoothing over in parts of this soil. Based off of that, a good estimate of the percentage of soil aggregate structure remaining after dunking would be something like 50%. The next is the hose test. It's good to have about a medium flow on this, and I typically turn it about one and a half turns. So the purpose of this test is basically you want to you want to see how much of the soil remains in your sieve afterwards. So we're going to be hosing down the soil for about one minute, and if your soil rushes out before one minute, record how much time it took for that soil to rush out. Otherwise, you know, hold it above hold it above your sieve about two feet and then just spray it down in circular motion. So I'll start, it's 36 right now, so at 37, you stop, you stop hosing it down. At the end of this, you can either weigh your soil, you can estimate the amount of soil that's left. Some cases it's really easy, nothing's remained in the sieve. And after one minute is up, you check how much is left in your sieve. So this is not too much that's left. It's mostly organic material. Maybe about, you know, less than, maybe this is like 5% of the total. Depending on what you measured your soil quality to be, there are some measures you can take if you think there might be room for improvement. You can consider cover crops such as legumes or perhaps reduced tillage, or you can find some alternative systems to tillage. You can also incorporate organic material back into the soil at some point in the year. For more information on soil quality, refer to some of the links below this video.